Hello and welcome to I with a Mentor. Today I am going to discuss with you about the meaning of the word holistic. We have seen this word holistic in many contexts. You see that we use it for herbs, for cosmetics and even for therapies. And if you find the name of my company Holistic Herbalist Private Limited, it is also there. So we go into more depth about the word holistic from Ayurvedic point of view. I gave a serious thought to the meaning of the word holistic from many points of view. But when I came across one of the Sanskrit words from Charak Samhita, and Charak Samhita is one of the most ancient and authoritative books of Ayurvedic medicine, I found a definition of the life and it resonated very much with the word holistic. As you can see in the Sanskrit words, the dynamic composite of body, senses, mind and soul is life. So Ayurveda describes the very nature of human life, the very fabric of human life to be holistic. So holistic means a dynamic composite of these four layers functioning or dimensions of life, body, senses, mind and soul. We will go through each one of these. Let's first start with human body. Ayurveda says human body is a composite of three doshas, vata, pitta and kapha, different types of tissues and organs and excretory waste. All it means is that human body in its biological form, in its vegetative aspect, if you keep aside the three other types of functioning, senses, mind and awareness, human body is just a biological entity and upon that all the other three aspects or layers they are functioning. Even though all these four aspects work together and are always present in a living person. But when you consider a newborn child, you will find that the bodily aspect, the physical aspect, the biological aspect is very much manifested. It is predominant and gradually other aspects like sensory, executive, mental, emotional and consciousness related aspects these gradually develop. The next aspect of holistic nature of life is senses. Ayurveda uses the word Indriya. These are 10. 5 are for sensory inputs and 5 are executive in nature or they perform some activities. So we come to the 5 sensory Indriyas or inputs. These are nose for smelling, tongue for tasting, eyes for looking at something, skin for touch and ears for hearing something. So if you consider all of these together, you will find that these act like a window for the outer world. Through these five senses, we are able to perceive along five different lines five different aspects of the outer world. Then these sensory data is processed in our body through nervous system and we are able to perceive it. So there is another correlation of the five senses with five elements. Nodge is related with earth element. Tongue is related with water. Eyes are related with fire element. Skin is related with air element and ears are related with sky or ether element. The next are the five executive indriyas. We call it karma indriya in Ayurveda. So we use tongue to speak, hands to grasp, legs to move, genitals for sex and reproduction and excretory organs. Yes, you see that tongue is present in both like sensory organs and executive organs because when we are using tongue to taste it is a sensory organ but when we are using it for speaking it is executive organ so you see that we are using these five like executive organs to execute different types of activities most of our outer activities that we do with body these are done through these five executive organs 
The third aspect of holistic teacher of life is mind. Yes, we call it mental and emotional well-being. We have thoughts or thinking process, feelings and emotions and moods. Or you can say that mental aspect or mind is having three types of product activities. The first one is cognitive. It relates with the thinking mind, rationalization, analysis, memory, focus. The second one is affective aspect. It deals with feelings and emotions. The third one is behavioral. It governs our activities, our habits our drive, inclination and tendencies. So all together, these three make our mental and emotional aspect. The fourth aspect of the holistic nature is life with soul. You also call it as awareness, pure being or consciousness. Actually, when it comes to awareness or consciousness, very little is explored by modern science and medicine despite all the technical developments and advancements. So if you want to know about consciousness, you need different types of tools and methodology. And when I say that all these matter that is related with consciousness or awareness, it is experiential in nature. Yes, you have to experience it. You have to explore it within yourself. That's why Yoga, one of the sister science of Ayurveda, is very much targeted, very much specific for starting this inner journey, for starting this self-exploration, for delving deeper into the realm of consciousness or awareness. Now I like to tell you about some of the facts, some of the truths about these four aspects of holistic nature of life. If you consider all of these together, you will find that when you move from body towards soul, you are moving from gross aspect to subtle one. Yes, in comparison to body, senses are subtle. In comparison to mind, senses are grosser. In comparison to soul, all the three, mind, senses and body are grosser. So, soul is the, or pure consciousness, it is the inner core. There is another fact that when you are moving from outside to inside, you find that everything is becoming more and more functionally active and impactful. It simply means that the more you are considering the inner core, the inner aspects of your holistic nature, they exert more impact on your life. They are actually functionally more active. And definitely it also means that the inner ones are more powerful. They have more control over the outer aspects. And you are moving from outside to inner core when you are moving from body towards the soul. And it is actually harder to control the inner aspects. You consider it like this. You are sitting right now and I ask you, do not move your hands and leg for one minute. Will you be able to do it? Definitely, you will be able to do it. But when you are hearing something and I ask you, thus you don't pay attention to it. You are not able to switch over from that sensory input. And when it comes to mind, you are thinking something, your mind is engrossed with something, then it will be very hard for you to switch over your focus immediately. And then very little is known about the consciousness. Most of our knowledge of consciousness is very basic. Actually, yoga has described four states of consciousness. And the fourth one, the transcendental one, it is very deep in nature. Most of our functioning, almost 24 hours over functioning, are into the three of the normal states of consciousness or awareness. And then when you are considering all these four together, these are one composite whole. All these together make you what you are. 
these are your own holistic nature this is what the word holistic means in reference to human life so whenever you are considering the word holistic or in any context you see how this is relating with your own nature how it is relating with you with your body with your senses with your mind with your soul or awareness how everything is impacting it now i am moving to some of the points some of the facts that i thought about how ayurveda is useful for holistic aspects of our life if you see ayurveda it can actually take care of all of these four aspects together in a very integrated in a very streamlined manner and at the same time if there is need there is some specific need to address any particular aspect whether it is body or senses or mind or awareness there are provisions there are tools there are practices and there are principles in ayurveda to take care of each of them in a very specific manner but if you consider ayurvedic principles you find that these principles are working like a compass you see that compass is always pointing toward the north direction if you consider the ayurvedic principles they are always guiding you they are always taking you navigating your life toward the true north of health and well being whenever you are adopting ayurveda practices you find that they are offering you lot of flexibility they are providing you lot of choices you are not bound to one set of food one set of diet one set of lifestyle you actually have plenty of choice ayurveda actually works like a silent thread you have seen the bead of flowers bead of different pearls or different ornaments so they all of them they have a silent thread that is connecting everything together so when i consider ayurveda i found the ayurvedic principles to be the silent thread in the bead of holistic and natural modalities yes these can be dosas ayurveda body mind type food cooking nutrition lifestyle sleep exercise herbs minerals massage detox daily and seasonal routines behaviors yoga meditation so this is not an exhaustive list but whatever you can find in holistic and natural modalities you can integrate it very easily with ayurvedic principles and this is the beauty of ayurveda that it integrates with them inside out and outside in finally thanks for taking the time and to watch this video and we are also covering ayurveda in a very holistic way if you are looking for ayurvedic treatment and holistic management of chronic disorders you can get benefit from ayurvedic herbalist and if you are looking to import top quality ayurvedic herbal supplements in your country you are welcome to holistic herbalist and if you want to implement the ayurvedic wisdom the ayurvedic principles and ayurvedic practices in your daily life to overcome chronic health issues or to experience positive well being you are welcome to ayurveda mentor finally thanks again have better health and greater happiness now and always thank you namaste